you witnessed an incident involving him and some of the other kids at, at Baird Academy, correct? Yes, I did. These kids were making fun of Alex, saying, how could a kid from Semaphore Heights afford a car like yours? Objection, Your Honor. This statement is hearsay. Your Honor, it's not being offered for the truth of the matter, sir. Over. Yes, I did. You react when Nate met Alex. I was worried because I knew right away that Alex wasn't the kind of person Objection, to Your Honor. Nate and his friends. This is a relevant testimony. Your Honor, may I be heard? Your Honor, this is relevant to show that upon when Ms. Nogarola saw Nate meeting Alex, she was able to tell immediately that Alex would not be the kind of person who would fit in with Nate Crope. This goes to show that as a reasonable person, she could tell this, whereas Ms. Sway could not. Assistant. Once the school year began, completed in 2007. Your Honor, may I approach the bench to have this document marked as exhibit B, I believe, for identification? Yes, you may. Thank you. We'll mark it as B. You may have it back. May I approach the witness? Yes, you may. Uh, Dr. Morrison, could you please identify this document? This is my curriculum vitae, which I have prepared. And is everything contained in this document true and accurate? Yes, it is. Your Honor, may I retrieve the document? Yes, sir. Your Honor, at this time, I would request this document. This document contains cumulative evidence, as we have already heard that doc about Dr. Moisen's educational background, her occupational history, the fact that she's testified in other trials. So I don't believe it is necessary for this document to be entered. Overall, I'll allow you to... I do have another objection, Your Honor. Under Rule 502, the procedure for entering this evidence requires that counsel lay foundation for this document to be entered. We have not heard what specific information is contained in this document and who prepared this document. Your Honor, may I be heard? Dr. Morrison has already testified that she prepared this document. This is a standard curriculum vitae containing her work experience, education, and other stuff. Overall. Did the actions of Ms. Sway have any effect on Alex Sultan's current psychological state? Objection, Your Honor. This question calls for the witness to give an opinion on the ultimate issue, and under Rule 704, that is not allowed, even for an expert witness, as she is testifying to approximate cause, which is one of the four pillars of negligence. Your Honor, may I respond? Under Rule 704B, it specifically states that expert witnesses may not testify to the ultimate issue in a criminal proceeding. This is a civil proceeding. Your Honor, if I may be heard. 704 subsection B does deal with criminal cases, but 704 subsection A is silent on the issue of witnesses giving opinions on the ultimate issue of this case. Dr. Moisen is an expert and may testify to the actions or inactions of Mr. Sway, but she may not opine on whether or not the, those actions were the proximate cause of Alex's current condition, as that is an ultimate issue and must be decided by the judges in this case. Your Honor, may I respond? Under, under 704A, it specifically states that uh, evidence otherwise admissible is not objectionable because it embraces the issue to be decided by the trier of fact. Well, I think that the uh, trier of fact will give the appropriate weight to her opinion, and she can give her opinion. It's a matter of weight, not admissibility. I'll, uh, I'll overrule the objection. Do you need me to repeat the question? Your Honor, if I may be heard, although the witness's answer may be long, it is not narration as it is all responsive to the question that was asked. May I be heard briefly? Uh, the question called for what his current employment is. The creation of the RIPAY program is not his current employment. Your Honor, if I may be heard, that is part of his current employment. Okay. Uh, overruled, and keep your answer a little more brief and to the point of the question. So RIPE is uh, the program in which I invented, and it has been... business would have a lack of personal knowledge on this issue. He's, he is not... Um, he's, he has no experience dealing with the Baird Academy disciplinary committees. He was not familiar with that. He did not meet yeah. with Mr. Herwish. And this line of questioning is outside the scope of this particular witness. Uh, uh, you're sustained on. Sustained without a foundation. You can ask it again if you can lay a foundation that he would have in, that information. Uh, Your Honor, I believe I laid foundation by asking if he had met with the headmaster before, and uh, I believe this goes straight to the quality of his testimony on the disciplinary matters at Baird as it was addressed on direct examination already. It's uh, calling into question his credibility um, as he did not meet with the headmaster, who is the 
uh, sole member of the subcommittee and can deal with all disciplinary matters on their own. Ask the question again, please. Uh, the question at this specific point was, uh, I believe uh, that it was you, the headmaster can deal with all disciplinary matters on his own, I believe was the one I was on at this point. You've already, he's already answered that question. Um, and then the following question, if it was, uh, was, and the whole headmaster can act as the sole member of the subcommittee. Well, only if he knows, and you can re, uh, well, redirect him on that. You can ask, answer actually went through. How did the students at Phillips react to it? Most students were actually really excited about the deal, especially Dr. student... Garner, lack of personal knowledge. May I respond? Sure. Dr. Gomez is the principal of Phillips High School, thus she interacts with students on an almost daily basis. These are simply her rationally based perceptions pursuant to Rule 701 as a lay witness. Response, Your Honor? Yes. Ms. Gomez cannot testify today to the mindset of each of these students that they were excited about the deal, and therefore she has a lack of personal knowledge to their own mindset towards the deal that can't be, can't be based, excuse me, on her observations. Uh, this is a uh, permissible opinion. You'll be able to cross-examine, certainly on that point. Objections overruled. Yes, Your Honor. Introduce what has previously been stipulated as Exhibit A to the court. Please note that I am showing opposing counsel a clean and unmarked copy of this exhibit. May I approach the witness? You may do so. Your Honor, uh, I would request, as discussed in pretrial, that given the amendments that the errata sheet makes to the Exhibit A, that errata sheet be taken up along with Exhibit A for the purposes of uh, evidence. Say that again. I'm sorry. Uh, because of the amendments that the errata sheet makes to the content of Exhibit A, I would request that the errata sheet be taken up along with Exhibit A to preserve the record. And to the extent that the errata sheet changes the facts in the statements, yes, yes that, that will be recognized. Yes, Your Honors. I can bring a copy. All right. May I approach the witness with a copy of Exhibit A and the errata sheet? You may do so. Thank you. Dr. Gomez, can you please tell the court what this is? This is the uh, Phillips High School Student Handbook. As it says, select provisions. And how familiar are you with this document? After working here for so long, uh, pretty familiar. I see it on almost a daily basis. And how available is this document to the students of Phillips? Well, as it says right here, a copy is provided to investigation at 10 City. Well, based on the reports of hacking and unauthorized Occupy literature. Your Honor, I believe the specific report to hacking does call for double hearsay in the evidence of the witness. May, may I respond? Yes. Your Honors, this is not hearsay. This is simply. Uh, a statement being used to explain Dr. Gomez's uh, subsequent actions. This is not being used for the truth of the matter as per Rule 801. Response, Your Honor. Can I hear your question again? It was, what, what did you do following Mancuso's investigation at Tent City? Okay. Yes. Your Honor, I believe opposing counsel is indeed offering the statement for the truth of the matter because, I uh, as I believe they'll, Ms. Will Gomez will later testify, she used this evidence given by Officer Mancuso to justify her continued custody of the phones of the students to this day. Objection is overruled. On illegal activities, such as hacking school computers. Objection, Your Honor. Here's it. Your Honor, may I respond? Yes. These statements are showing intent, plan, or motive, and this is an exception to the hearsay rule under 8033. May I respond, Your Honor? Yes. Specifically under 8033, they can't be used to actually prove the fact of a matter, and that's what Mr. Mancuso is trying to uh, prove today. But furthermore, we believe that the information that Officer Mancuso has testified actually occurred after an Occupy meeting and is not attributed to any of the Occupy students, specifically the five defendants here today. Therefore, this is hearsay. Objection is overruled. Yes, Your Honor. Would you like me to re-ask the question? Yes, please. So what went on at subsequent Occupy meetings? Sometimes you have to break the law in order to get notice Objection, and get Your Honor, the man... Can you say once again? Your Honor, may I respond? Yes. This is not hearsay, seeing as it, as, as it is an admission of a party opponent. We have clearly established that the Occupy Five were the organizers and those who ran the group. Therefore, they act as representatives to the group Occupy. Therefore, this is an exception to hearsay as set forth by Rule 801-D2. Response, Your Honor. Yes. There's been no foundation to be laid that any of the five defendants here today were even present at the meeting where those statements were made. There's been no uh, evidence to show that these students were the running the specific meeting that Mr. Mancuso is testifying to, and thus it's not an adopted mission. It is hearsay today. Your Honor. Yes. May I respond? We have clearly established that the Occupy Five were those who ran and organized the meeting. Therefore, Occupy organizers does refer to the Occupy Five. 
think you're going to have to establish some foundation. I'll sustain the objection. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Who seemed to be the relevance? May I be heard? Yes. Specifically in the Board of Education versus Mergen's case, the Supreme Court was faced with a similar decision like this, where a non-curriculum-based group was under scrutiny for their use of school facilities, and that non-curriculum-based group didn't fulfill the procedural requirements of the school district in order to become a curriculum-based group. But in that decision, the Supreme Court put no weight on the procedural requirements, much like in this case the procedural requirement of applying, and only focused on the substance of the group itself in determining whether or not it was curriculum-based. Thus, opposing counsel using the line of questioning to establish procedural requirements is not relevant in this case, as the Supreme Court put no weight of the evidence on the actual matter in the Mergen's case. May I respond? Yes. This case is not Board of Education versus Mergen's. Opposing counsel may argue the connection to Board of Education versus Mergen's in his closing argument. However, this questioning about if Occupy ever registered as a student group is simply being used to show the court the facts of the case. He may argue its relevance to it being a curriculum related group on closing argument. Response, Your Honor. Yes. I, while I understand this case certainly is not the Board of Education versus Mergen's case, the fact of the matter is that the Mergen's case established the standard for being a curriculum or non-curriculum based group, which is the issue at hand today and which is the issue that opposing counsel is trying to draw from my witness. Thus, it's not relevant today to ask about the procedural requirements as the Board of Education case actually never put any weight of consideration based on curriculum or non-curriculum solely based on the actual procedural requirements, simply only on the substantive matters of the group. May I respond? Uh, I don't think you need to. I mean, that's a proper point to raise on final argument, but for purposes of cross-examination, I think the, the question is proper. I'm going to over- No objection, Your Honor. Granted. Do we have permission to move about the board within reason during direct examinations, cross-examinations, and opening and closing statements? You do. Would you prefer that we tend our experts for certification, for certification in front of the jury or abide by Delaware practice? Abide by Delaware practice. Do you enter the stipulations and evidence? Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. Pursuant to the Mock Trial Rule 410 on page 76, can we assume sidebar conferences will be held in open court for educational purposes? Correct. And do we have permission to publish exhibits to the jury once they have been admitted into evidence? We do. Any objection to that? No objection, Your Honor. <coughs> That is all Your Honor, the defense also asks the commission to move freely about the wells in the courtroom during, during the course of the trial. Granted. And everything else has been addressed. Thank you. At this time, I will uh, swear all the witnesses. Please rise. <coughs> you are a witness. Do you promise that the testimony you are about to Uh, yes, it's a map of the intersection of Summit Street and Jones Avenue. What are the significance of those streets? Uh, well, this is where the accident had occurred. Do you know who prepared it? Uh, yes, it says right here, Detective Terry Osgood. Are there any other sort of markings on that map? Uh, there are some references to the accident that occurred that night. Will it aid you in your testimony today? Uh, yes, it will. Your Honor, at this time, I would like to enter into evidence what has been previously marked as Exhibit 2 into Plaintiff Exhibit 2. Its authenticity and accuracy has been stipulated. Any objection? No objections, Your Honor. We just ask that this be marked as a joint exhibit because we plan to use it as well. No objections, Your Honor. All right, it will be so marked. Before for 10, I would like to call constructive sidebar. I call this sidebar under two grounds, Your Honor. First, the personal views of this witness simply do not matter with regards to what happened that night. But if somehow it did, under Rule 403, its probative value is substantially outweighed by an unfair prejudice. This witness's views cannot be used to call into question what he saw that night. Well, first, I'm going to allow the question to be finished. And do not answer it, Mr. Witness. Finish the question. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Costco, you can't stand gas guzzler SUVs. Anything further in support of your objection? No, Your Honor. Response? Your Honor, this question goes to this witness's bias against people who drive trucks, and under Rule 607, bias is always relevant. Your reply? I do not believe bias would have affected this witness's, what, what this witness saw, Your Honor. The objection is overruled. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Cosgrove, you say that you can't stand gas guzzler SUVs. Well, I try to help. Authenticity happens to be. Any 
check. Objection, Your Honor. Here's side. Under Rule 8036, I believe I've laid the foundation that this is something she would normally do in the course of her business at St. St. Louis Associates, and therefore it is an exception to the hearsay rule. Your reply? Your Honor, this witness is allowed to testify to anything within the report, but actually entering in this exhibit, this report as an exhibit, is hearsay. The objection is sustained. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. I want to talk about your investigation, but first, what made you reach out to the causational factors of the accident? There were several causational factors. One, Alex McMasters was moving at too fast a speed to safely make the turn from Summit Street to Jones Avenue, going 31 miles per hour. Two, Alex McMasters failed to activate his left turn signal. There's no physical evidence of it, and the sole eyewitness, Cindy Cosgrove, did not see one. Three, Jess Paxton made no indication to turn. Thus, Alex McMasters failed to yield the right of way. Four, According to testimony I reviewed, Alex McMasters reeked of alcohol and was slurring his speech. The kids in Europe drink beer when they watch soccer, so we decided that we would try it. How many did you have? We each only had one. And how did this affect your judgment? It didn't affect it at all. It was just one beer. Objection, Your Honor. This is an improper opinion. This witness does not have the basis to testify as to specific ways that the alcohol affected her own body. Your Honor, as it is the witness's own body, I think she's more than capable of testifying as to how she perceived its effects. The objection is overruled. Yes. <laughs> how did the alcohol... What was objection, he saying Your in the Honor. phone? Speculation. Your reply? Your Honor, the witness is testifying uh, based on her rational observations, therefore it is admissible. How oh, not? Yes, Your Honor. What was Mr. McMaster's doing? He said he was talking on the cell phone. And what was he saying? He said, I hit someone, we'll fix this, you know people. And was there anything unusual about Mr. McMaster's that night? He was slurring his words and his breath was guilty. Don't you think you would be filing a case against Ms. Paxton? Well... Would you, would you have me rephrase the question? No, well, I thought... Objection, Your Honor, relevance. Your Honor, this just goes to show who hit who and who is responsible. If Mr. Jackson really believed that Ms. Paxton was responsible for this collision, I do not understand why he would not be filing a case against her. And therefore, it's relevant. Your Honor, I don't see how Mr. Jackson's injuries or whether he decided to press charges to have charges against Ms. Paxton or not has anything to do with this case or who was to cause for this answer. Opposing counsel in the direct opened the doors with injuries. Can you repeat the question? If you believed Ms. Paxton was guilty, why didn't you file a case against her? Well, because I don't believe she's guilty for my injuries. I'm kind of a cause for those. You know, I brace myself. I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to do that. Your Honor, I have no further questions. <coughs> Really about the wealth of the courtroom throughout the course of the trial. Granted. The state would also invite the court's attention to the provisions of Rule 4.2 that the stipulations are considered part of the record and are already admitted to evidence. So noted. Your Honor, at this time, the state would ask to tender copies of those stipulations to the court and to the members of the jury with the assistance of co-counsel. Any objection? Very <coughs> wrong. May do so. Permission to approach the bench, Your Honor. May I move to the bail. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Bell. Is there any other application? Yes, Your Honor. While the rules of this proceeding do require the constructive sequestration of witnesses, in this jurisdiction, each party is allowed to have a party representative seated at council table. Therefore, the state designates Detective Joe Friday, the chief investigating officer in this matter, to be our party representative and to be seated at council table. I'll allow that. Thank you, Your Honor. The state is ready to proceed. Any applications by the defense? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, first off, we ask the state permission to move freely about the courtroom within reason. Granted. And we ask the permission to publish copies of the exhibits once they have been entered into evidence to the jury members. Any objection? No, Your Honor. Granted. And we have laminated copies of our exhibits to handle with the witnesses and with no objection from the opposing counsel, we ask permission to use them. Granted. And since there is no rule for our expert witnesses, should we abide by Delaware law or tender them in the presence of the jury? Does the state have a position? 
Your Honor, it's our knowledge that in this jurisdiction it is not required that we tender um, expert witnesses, that they can just be allowed to go on with their testimony after the foundation for an expert witness testimony has been laid. Right, is that your application? I was just asking for your preference, Your Honor. That is no need to tender the witness as an expert. Yes, Your Honor. Certainly. Oh, excuse me. Can we cross the town? Yes, Your Honor. In your affidavit, don't you say that over 4,000 deaths occur each year due to alcohol poisoning? Objection, Your Honor. This is an improper impeachment of the witness. I'm simply asking if he states that in his affidavit, Your Honor. Your Honor, it's improper to quote specifically from the witness's affidavit unless he's contradicted himself first. He must contradict himself, and then he can be approached with a statement directly from his statement. I'll allow the question. We'll yes, sir. Isn't it true that 4,000 deaths occur each year due to alcohol poisoning? Yes. And you also stated that... Correct. And in fact, you already had closed his case at one point, believing that the cause of death was alcohol poisoning. Is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. Dr. Wright had determined that it was an alcohol overdose case, and at the time, I had no reason to question that. Now, the night Duke collapsed, you talked to Austin Tatis. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And she said things like, Duke was way too cocky? Yes. And somebody needed to bring Duke down a notch? Yes, she did. Let the record reflect what we've shown in closing counsel. At this time, the state moves to enter what has been previously marked as Exhibit G into evidence as state's Exhibit G. Its authenticity has been stipulated. Any objection? Yes, Your Honor, on two grounds. First off, under Rule 802, this is inadmissible because this is an out-of-court statement being offered for its truth. And also under Rule 805, there is a statement from someone else. This is hearsay within hearsay. Your response? Uh, Your Honor, this is the witness's own testimony. She conducted this autopsy, so therefore, this autopsy is not hearsay with this witness. Can I respond, Your Honor? Yes. This is hearsay with this witness because it is an out-of-court statement that is being offered for its truth, and there is still my hearsay within hearsay objection. May I respond, Your Honor? Briefly. Under Rule 8036, this is a business record kept under regular uh, activity and conduct by the medical examiner's office, so therefore it, it is admissible in this case. Do you reply to that? They have not laid the proper foundation that this is a regular conducted business activity, and once again, 805 hearsay within hearsay. I agree. The objection is sustained. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, this is not speculation it's stated in her witness statement. May I respond, Your Honor? Yes. Just because this testimony is stated in the witness's statement does not mean it is admissible. Under Rule 602, she has a lack of personal knowledge, and therefore this testimony is inadmissible. Your Honor, uh, under Pursuant Rule 607, I'm going to test the witness's credibility to her connections with the Tatia's family. You may do that, but the objection is sustained. Yes, Your Honor. So, you feel he may have had something to do with your appointment? Objection, Your Honor. Under Rule 602, this witness has a lack of personal knowledge. Your Honor, I'm asking her to testify to test her credibility, which you said I was allowed to do. She may answer if she has personal knowledge. Excuse me? Could you restate the question? I'm sorry. Absolutely. No, don't worry about it. You feel he may have had something to do with you being appointed, is that correct? I don't know if he necessarily had something to do with it. Um, it helps to have friends in high places, though. Now. Being an expert in your field, you knew that due to a natural burial, certain organs would have decomposed by the time you exhumed the body. As I mentioned before, many of the organs had already decomposed and our access to these samples was inhibited. But one thing you did have access to was I.M. Wright's initial report, is that correct? I had access to his report, but I also had access to the hair follicles and nails from my own testing. Before your own testing, you did review his report before beginning your investigation. Oh, yes. Your Honor, this time, if you... Your Honor, this is not speculation, it's stated in her witness statement. May I respond, Your Honor? Yes. Just because this testimony is stated in the witness's statement does not mean it is admissible. Under Rule 602, she has a lack of personal knowledge, and therefore this testimony is inadmissible. Your Honor, uh, under Pursuant Rule 607, I'm going to test the witness's credibility to her connections with the Tatia's family. You may do that, but the objection is sustained. Yes, Your Honor. So, you feel he may have had something to do with your appointment? Objection, Your Honor. Under Rule 602, this witness has a lack of personal knowledge. Your Honor, I'm asking her to testify to test her credibility, which you said I was allowed to do. She may answer if she has personal knowledge. Excuse me? Could you restate the question? I'm sorry. Absolutely. No, don't worry about it. You feel he may have had something to do with you being appointed, is that correct? I don't know if he necessarily had something to do with it. Um, 
it helps to have friends in high places, though. Now, being an expert in your field, you knew that due to a natural burial, certain organs would have decomposed by the time you exhumed the body. As I mentioned before, many of the organs had already decomposed and our access to these samples was inhibited. But one thing you did have access to was Ian Wright's initial report, is that correct? I had access to his report, but I also had access to the hair follicles and nails from my own testing. Before your own testing, you did review his report before beginning your investigation. Oh, yes. Your Honor, this time, if you